Welcome to Success at Scale, the podcast that covers business stories from experienced entrepreneurs and business leaders and startup founders on how to translate business ideas into business results. I'm your host, Greg Stein, and today we're going to talk with Mr. David Frangioni. This guy is absolutely a rock star. You know, they had that Super Bowl commercial with rock stars. This guy actually is a rock star. He's an award-winning veteran of music and audio video uh, technology in the industry at large. Uh, And according to Ozzy Osbourne, he is the rocket man, only happy when he has a fuse box in his hands. And I couldn't be more proud and honored to have the CEO of Modern Drummer Magazine and so many other things with us today. Uh, David, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Greg. It's great to be here. Hello, everybody. And thank you for the great intro. So, so David, tell us a, a little bit about you and your your background, and and that includes the records behind you. Well, you know, I started at a super young age, two years old, playing the drums. I don't even know how I started playing the drums, and if it weren't for photos, I wouldn't even have a memory of starting that young. But you know, I I had uh, retinoblastoma, cancer of the eye, uh, around age two, and that forced the removal of my right eye, which course, then I became half blind for my entire life. So I never really had a point of reference of what it's like to see with two functioning eyes. Um, and I think between the trauma, the challenge, the, the, you know, the, the, the frightening nature of going through doctors and hospitals at a young age, I think all of that kind of brought music to me as a refuge and as something that I, it turns out I had a great passion, uh, for and still do to this day. And then from you know, starting and finding the drums at a really young age, it evolved into playing a lot of gigs and kind of pursuing, I want to be the world's greatest drummer. And then that took me into technology uh, first as part of wanting to expand my knowledge of drumming. And at that time in the 80s, technology was very novel, uh, extremely niche. And then I ended up finding music technology and and the combination of music, technology, playing, producing, engineering, consulting, it's been a big part of it, um, and working on, you know, product development, all these myriad lanes I'm, I'm very passionate about. And I found that calling uh, in my teens. And it was the perfect convergence uh, for, for my life and what I've, uh, you know, created and contributed of playing, even though I was not a full-time drummer and have not been a full-time drummer since that time, uh, with all of the technology side of things, because really without the music side of it, I do still love technology, but uh, my real passion is music and technology, that combination. And here we are today. I, I got to tell you, man, I, I had the pleasure of of meeting you and visiting the, the Frangioni Drum Museum. And I got to be honest, at first I was a little skeptical. I'm a drum guy, too, man. And and I, I went there. I was like, he's got a drum museum. I mean, how, well, how many drums could he have? You know, like this is kind of interesting. And I get there and, and you greet me and, and you bring me in. You treated me like the king. I was I loved it. And I come in and oh, my goodness. I haven't been. I haven't stopped talking about it for weeks. The drum museum is spectacular. I mean, absolutely spectacular. Maybe tell us a little bit about uh, that and the Frangioni Foundation. Well, thank you. Um, it's private. It's invitation only. So I hope that everyone who visits has the same experience that that you and I had, because uh, that's really what I want to create. Is you know the, these moments that you take with you forever. And when I heard us, you know, when I hit a certain level of success, um, I wanted to give back on the largest scale that I possibly could. You know, I mean, they always say you can't uh, quench the thirst of someone with, you know, from an empty glass. So I had to get to a certain point where I could actually contribute in a meaningful way. And uh, that happened a while ago. um, And I thought that the found, you know, first I wrote some books um, And the the two books you saw, Clint Eastwood Icon and Icon Revised and Expanded, which Clint was uh, gracious enough to be involved in, and the money goes to charity. And then I did a third book, uh, Crash, the World's Greatest Drum Kits, which I believe, if you don't have it, you've seen it. Um, So those three books, all the the revenue goes to um, charity. So the Drum Museum was an extension of that, where we could inspire 
um, children and and just just people people that you know that are are inspired by you know music drumming memorabilia the memories and the moments in time that go along with that inspiration and create that inspiration and i thought that you know it would uh be impactful so the fact that uh you know that you were impacted by it and i think a lot of other people who have visited feel the same way means that you know we're on the right track it is part of my nonprofit frangionifoundation.org and it's the modern drummer hall of fame so it's uh you know it's quite quite an endeavor but you know people are responding to it and i think it's serving its purpose and we continue to refine it and grow it and you know we're just going to keep going as long as we can you know get some support well i'll tell you you know this this podcast is called success at scale and and you you kind of embody you know exactly what that is right i mean here you are uh, absolutely successful in in everything you've done but i know that doesn't come without extremely hard work right so so take us back right to you know you've worked with bands like aerosmith i see the logo behind you and and so many others you know like talk to us about like what does it take to be successful uh in the music business well the music business is a very unique and tough business um so i think that's kind of its own discussion i think before there's success in the music business you know you need to be able to be successful in general and in business then then you take it up a few notches if it's going to happen in the music business um it's just that challenging has a very unique set of uh, hurdles um and to answer your question you know success is the result or i should say success is our results of moments along the journey that you hit a goal and uh and you and you realize the results of that goal and then it sets the table for the next goal and the next successes so i you know i don't think it ever I don't think that journey has a as a final destination, right? I think you're always achieving, and uh, along the way are successes. And you know, you look back and you always cherish every successful uh, endeavor or moment. Uh, but you know, they usually are less than the one you're accomplishing right now, right? So you just keep because you're growing it, and you're you're not staying complacent on uh, you know what you've achieved. And I think that's really important. Now, how to get there? You know, it's different for everyone. Uh, if I were to speak very generally to try to offer, you know, some of the blueprints, um, I would say that, yes, hard work is certainly part of it. It's, it's not enough to do hard work, although it's a very important ingredient. What hard work will do uh, as, you know, as an ingredient towards success is at the very least speed up the process. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times you can still get there with smart work and a good game plan um, and a commitment to reaching that goal uh, and hard work will be necessary. But the more hard work, the faster that you can usually get to your goal. But you can't overlook smart work, you know, where you're strategizing and you're planning and you're putting together, you know, what what you do based on what milestone that you just achieved um, and start with the first one, you know, uh, it's, it's good to swing for the fences, but you've got to be able to accomplish the goals. You've got to, you've got to achieve it. So um, you can swing for the fence. You can say, I want to be a billionaire uh, or I want to start, you know, an online business that does, you know, this or that. Um, and that's, that's not, there's no such thing as dreaming too big. It's just now you have to back up and accomplish all the steps that actually will create that end result. So I don't think the dream can ever be too big, but I think you have to stay very committed to the steps that along that journey will get you to that point. And that commitment is where, you know, you, I heard great saying a long time ago, and I'm sure everyone's heard this is uh, winners never quit and quitters never win. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of athletes that chant that, that to themselves and you know, use that as, you know, just a very focused mantra to, to base, uh, you know, some of the moments in time where the challenge seems to be at, at the verge of defeating, defeating us, you know, and, and it's, it's awesome. really, it's really hard to overcome those moments. So I think that's where commitment really shines is that 
you know, yes, it's hard and tough. And yes, you want to quit. And yes, it's easier to pack up and start something else. Um, but, you know, that's never going to achieve the kind of big dreams that, you know, that one, one will proclaim. So state the dream as big as you want it. No such thing is too big, but stay committed to actually achieving it. And that will get you past the moments where you want to quit. I love it. I love it, David. So, so let me ask you this, you know, so this is an interesting one. I mean, modern drummer, uh, you acquired modern drummer, not long ago. You're the CEO of modern drummer. Tell us about that journey and how that transpired. Well, modern drummers, you know, great example of a huge business challenge. Um, we're overcoming it. We're getting through it. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up acquiring it just a few weeks before the pandemic. So, the timing of it in hindsight, because we didn't see the pandemic coming. It's hard to believe in February of 2020 that this was an unknown considering what happened a month later. Um, but that was the case. So, uh, you know, we kind of got blindsided as, as everyone did. Um, and so for Modern Drummer, it just amplified the, the extent of the challenge, which we would have had without the pandemic. So, you know, as a, a Modern Drummer is an iconic brand. We have millions of loyal uh, fans and followers of the brand, of which I've been one my whole life. I know you've been one. Me too. I me yep. too. I and love we're it. We're very grateful for that, and that's really what we're doing this for. You know, it's it's a hundred percent about the readers, the community, the viewers, um, all of the drummers and lovers of drums and drumming that are you know passionate about modern drummer. And someone told me the other day, and and it's echoed what other people have told me literally thousands of times, which is. Without Modern Drummer, there's no drumming community in the same way that there is with Modern Drummer. And I think that's absolutely right. And that's how I've always felt. It's the well 47 years old, right? So what other drum community that at, at this level, at a worldwide and well-known level uh, is there that's 47 years old? Yeah. Right. So I think that, you know, we have to honor that. And, um, and it, you know, we need to keep doing our part. And from a business standpoint, you know, its founder and visionary, Ron Spagnardi, died in 2003. Yeah, uh, he was an amazing guy. Uh, yeah, amazing amazing. guy, visionary, incredible. Yeah. And, uh, and Isabella's widow, you know, was steering the ship. And, you know, she's in her 80s and, you know, living her life uh, to the fullest. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a transition time to take the business and bring it into the digital age, reimagine it, reinvent it, staying true to the core roots of what Modern Drummer is about and what it's always been, um, but go to another level in many ways. And, um, you know, Isabel, you know, honored me with, uh, you know, with the, the, the brand, really, just saying, hey, you know, you're she said her words, you know, you're the closest person I've ever met to Ron's vision and, and you're situated uh, perfectly to understand the technology side of things that modern drummer Ron passed away before all this technology really came you know, to fruition. And, uh, and so, you know, this is, this is kind of the, you know, the next chapter and, uh, and now we're with consequence, which is, um, you know, which is great because we're staying in our lane and we're doing what we've always done best, but then we have uh, the expertise in some of the lanes that Consequence has refined and grown in over the last 15 years. And uh, so it's it's a very synchronous and really special combination that, uh, that I'm really happy about because they stay in their lane, we stay in our lane, so everybody's true to what they do, but then we converge where, uh, you know, one plus one equals 10. Uh, and that's really, uh, you know, where we are right now. So speaking of that, what, what do you think the future of, of, you know, you got music and tech and business and all of this stuff kind of converging in this crazy way with AI out there and all this stuff going on. What do you think the future looks like? Well, you know, the future is just going to keep growing and growing on, on these virtual fronts. Um, you know, we're, we're firmly in the digital age, to say the least, and it's growing very, very fast. And I think that AI and AR, especially AR, I think that that's where it's all going. I think that, you know, much in the way, you know, if anyone has a car where 
They, the technology is typically called something like iDrive, where you see on your windshield the navigation and the speed limit, and um, and you see it night or day. Mm -hmm. um, and it aids you, right, staying staying focused on the road and and getting uh, you know pertinent information that moment. And I think that that's where it's all going in in terms of wearables, and even in terms of smart cars. You know, the more cars can drive themselves, the more we can consume information on the windshield. And I think that where it's all going will be this form of uh, real-time AR. You know, in other words, it's one thing to wear a headset and that certainly will be, you know, a fraction of what happens and it'll be part of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the real future is going to be in how we actually live and this technology is integrated and we're not gonna walk around in our lifetimes anyway with headsets we will walk around with wearables and glasses and as we're doing now with smartwatches. Um, and I think that's where it's all headed. And then the information that's curated and served, which we now get on a smartphone, and you think about how far that's come in a relatively short period of time. I mean, it's, it's basically obsoleted, you know, commoditized traditional news because it's all just curated you know, in real time for us on our phone. So I think that'll migrate to, a, you know, to wider applications um, and then just keep, you know, evolving and evolving and evolving. So total change of topic here. What, what like gets you out of bed in the morning? What inspires you? I mean, you, you continue to do all these crazy things. You've got your hands in all these different things from drums to tech. I mean, what gets you excited? Everything that I do, really, you know, I mean, every day I wake up, I'm just happy that I got another day, you know, or at least the beginning of another day. I'm guaranteed. Let's start. I got the, yeah, I got the <laughs> night before, which is a big deal. Right. Um, and so now, you know, hopefully I'll get through another day and then just take each day as a blessing and as part of, you know, whatever the bigger plan is, however many days are left. Um, and, uh, and, you know, really everything that I do, I mean, I, you know, I live every day as if it's my last, yet I do have future plans at all times. And I certainly plan on things, you know, going the long game, but, uh, but don't take a day for granted. You know, I don't believe in throwaway days. I think that's probably why all seven days to me and have been for most of my life, probably from going through the, the trauma of the eye cancer. I'm sure that contributed to this philosophy where every day is the same for me in terms of you know, what, what's possible. You know, I don't look at a Saturday as a day that, you know, it's just a day to, you know, just throw away or do nothing on unless that happens to be the day that I want to refuel or family time or, or that kind of thing. But, but it's every day is this placeholder of possibilities. Uh, and what we do with it, you know, is, you know, is, is going to be what, you know, it's, it's going to be seen in what we create, the results that we get and how much we contribute and what, what that day looks like when it's finally over. But there's a lot to do within every day. So do you still make time to play some drums? As much as I can. It's one of my greatest passions still. Um, you know, that time, look, there's no excuse for it. It's just when I, I have to look at my priorities and playing the drums sometimes is part of a professional application, you know, if I'm doing a master class or I had the blessing of performing with Carl Palmer in June of 2016, which was a lifelong dream. So oh, I had to practice cool. a lot for that. So I've had, you know, professional moments uh, or have professional moments on a somewhat regular basis. Uh, and that prompts, you know, making time to practice. Um, it, I usually don't have the time to practice or make the time to practice is more like it outside of those obligations um just because there's so many things going on with all of the businesses that i'm that i work on um that practicing you know if it's a if it's just for me i'll use it to nurture my soul i'll use it to refuel but i can't use it as if i were a professional drummer full-time like a dave we weckle or steve gad yeah. where that's their living that's what they do so practicing is is integral for me, I don't make my living playing the drums full time every day. I have many other obligations and responsibilities, so I prioritize those uh, over my own needs and fun, if you will. Uh, but I love 
playing the drums. I love practicing. I love learning, um, studying with Joe Morello, studying with my dear friend, Don Femularo, our dear friend, Don Femularo. And I sent, you know, my thoughts and blessings to him as he's dealing with everything he's going through. And he and I are very, very close. And I, he's always in my prayers and he's been an inspiration. He's Absolutely. been a disciple of, uh, of uh, Joe Morello. And so studying with him has been incredible. I feel like I'm 16 again, studying with Joe and kind of taking it next level. And it's just, you know, what, what's better, you know, when you love drumming, what's better than drumming, right? It's hard to say that there is anything, you know, that, that feeling of making music at the drums and, you know, playing like our, like our heroes. It's a magical thing. And, and I think, you know, we have a lot of listeners that are not drummers, right? And I don't even know how to, how to explain it to someone, right? Who, who doesn't get the joy of sitting behind a set of drums, but you know, I'll say this, you know, my my approach to, to business and, and life in general is fundamentally, uh, you know, like yours, uh, you know, grounded by playing the drums. I've been playing since I was a little kid, too. And, you know, I actually see the world of business, uh, you know, through through drumming. Right. Like it, it cracks me up and I try and explain it to people and they don't really understand. But if you really think about it and you're on stage and you're performing with a band and you're feeling this great energy and you're feeding off of everybody's energy around, you, you've got a great foundational rhythm, you're holding in time, right? You've got a great melody you're listening for, you're trying to get the, you know, everything to lock in around you and bring it all together. So the people in the audience are just loving it and, you know, eating it up and dancing and whatever they're doing. And if you do that right, and the audience, meaning your customers, man, you you hit a home run, you know, and it, it is very analogous. You know, when I talk to, to business people all the time, they say to me, they're like, I totally get that, you know, and even though they're not drummers. So it's it's kind of cool. Music really is a universal language. And and that's why I was so stoked when I met you, because I was like, holy cow. This guy, there's nobody that gets me, but this guy, this guy gets me. Uh, and he, he's speaking the same language I am. And uh, David, I, I just, I love you to bits, man. It's so cool what you're doing with Modern Drummer and, and everything. You know, I mean, there's just so much happening here. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it, Greg. It means the world. You know, it's it's the support of people like yourself who who I respect tremendously. And I'm, you know, very grateful, uh, you know, for how, how much you are passionate about modern drummer and and the projects we're up to and 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 the you know the the world at large that is you know that that feels that way too it's just that's what we do it for and i think when you talked about drumming being nagalist to uh you know other uh you know forms of passion i think that's really the key right is it's you don't have to be a drummer to appreciate and understand what we think about drumming because everyone has their passion and there's god knows that the majority of people are not having drumming as their passion, you know, we're in the minority, if anything, right. or, you know, we're, we're niche. Um, but passion is something that's, you know, probably all 7 billion or however many billion people are out there right now have. Um, and whatever that is, you just substitute what you're passionate about with drumming, or in our case, you know, collectibles or business or um, technology, or whatever instrument you play, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You just fill in the blank and it's all the same energy. It's all the same spirit. It's all the same drive that fuels us. Uh, it's just that the mechanism is unique to each person. And that's what makes the world, you know, such a great place is we, we all come together uniquely our own. You're spot on. So, so let me ask you this. So, you know, look, it's uncertain times, right? You know, people, you know, there are people enjoying success and some that are not. And it, and it, it's a time of change and reinvention and all this. What kind of practical advice would you give to someone out there that's listening right now that might be struggling, might be having a hard time and trying to figure out, you know, where the next paycheck comes from or, or how they how they make ends meet? What, what would you recommend to them right now? Well, you, you, you know, first and foremost, you can't give up and you can't, you know, I think what you say to yourself and what you proclaim out loud, you know, those, those are the first two starting points to what happens next, right? Cause it's within each of us, uh, to accomplish whatever we want. Um, so I think the first step is to make sure that your internal, uh, 
conversations are positive and really focused on what you want. I'm a big believer in that. So I think that there's a faction of people that right off the bat uh, will find that they have to shift their internal dialogue. Um, If you say, I'm broke, or I'll never have this, or I'll never do that, you know, that's basically what's going to happen. So you have to shift that dialogue to, um, you know, to a spiritual practice that is really focused on what you want. That's the starting point. Now, if that's already there and you're, you're doing your proclamations and you're really solid in having that internal conversation as to what it is that you want, what you're going to accomplish, then you have to start working on the how. Um, and, you know, some of that is, is done automatically through your proclamations. And the other part of it is putting uh, your plan into action. Uh, and I think that, you know, you have, to, you have to understand that everything great, everything that we admire, you and me and, and everyone watching and listening, started with a beginning and had many steps, many milestones. And then at some point, usually not the end, uh, it, it was what we admire, right? So whatever that is, Apple, you know, if you admire Apple where they are right now, or you admire, you know, um, Amazon, what Jeff Bezos and, and, and his vision accomplished, or, you know, or whatever it is, the, it's, it's the result of many steps and overcoming many setbacks. And, and even though it doesn't all look the same, even though someone living paycheck to paycheck doesn't look or feel the same way as when Apple almost went out of business in the 90s and Steve Jobs came back and not only saved it, but turned it into the multi-trillion dollar company that it is today. Um, you know, it's it's a similar feeling, right? It's, it's, it's the context, um, you know, is it, everybody has their unique challenges, but the the energetic of we are facing, you know, uh, uh, you know what feels like a firing squad right now, uh, and we have to, you know, find a way past this, through it, and out of it, and then to success. You know that that mindset is very similar across the board, uh, and you have to, you know, really adopt it and practice it, and put it into action. Right. So, I mean, I like to read books. I like to listen to Audible. Uh, I like to do things that, um, you know, feed that and give me, you know, more insight and uh, and more different ways to look at things. Um, and so that's one of my, you know, tools, if you will. Um, everyone has a different way to do it, uh, but it's taking those tools and then doing something with them is the key. I think a lot of people that aren't achieving what they want will find that when they take an honest look at where they are, um, they could be doing more and they could, and, or if they're already doing as much as they can, then they need to look at where the shift is. Okay. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm too much brick and mortar. So I have to focus. I have to do more online. Um, there's so many possibilities right now uh, I'll give you one practical example. You know, I was meeting with a business person the other day and they're starting a new business. And I said, you know, I, I can't believe how much business you have. Like you haven't advertised and you just, you started fairly recently and yet your business is just doing amazing. Like, and, and your website isn't even that built out. Like what, how are you doing this? Uh, and it wasn't like an extremely well networked person on his own. So like it was real. I was really curious. Like what is the what 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 code did you crack here? And you know what it was? eBay. So here's a here's here's a tool that's available to everybody in the world pretty much. And he used eBay, and he built this huge community of interested buyers who then told other people. And like it's a long story, but the short version is. It's not just about, he didn't use eBay like, hey, I've got an old suit in the closet that I never wear anymore. (laughs) Let me just put it up there and get rid of it and make a couple of bucks. Like he used it as a mechanism to launch a business for virtually no startup costs uh, in terms of marketing anyway. 
and has turned it into a multi hundred thousand dollar business in a very short period of time that'll break a million probably by year two. And it's a cottage industry wow. business. And, um, and it's all just by, you know, being innovative with a commonly available free tool. I mean, yes, they take the fees, but you don't build out a website. You don't do any of the things that they've already done. And you don't have to go out and find all of these people in the same way you would if you didn't have eBay. So I just thought it was such an innovative, great practical use. Now I'll take that concept and I'll apply it to a business at some point where it'll fit or I'll apply it to a different tool out there. Maybe it's Reddit, maybe it's TikTok, like whatever it is, looking at what's available and using innovation as a means to say, okay, this is how I'm going to envision this pathway and how I'm going to serve the community. And as a result of that service, um, you know, my product will be successful because that's really the key, right? It's like, you you know, as an owner or as a business innovator in any capacity, we get paid less. But when when we get paid and how we get paid in that sense is from bringing contribution, right? right? It's, you know, if you just want to make money, then, you know, run a hedge fund or, you know, go to Wall Street or do something that is purely 100% about you making money. But if you want to do it through goods and services in some form, then you got to contribute and and find a better mousetrap, find a way to enhance people's lives and whatever it is that you contribute. And then, you know, yes, we get paid last, but, you know, we were able to make a living. We're able to contribute, leave a legacy in the best case, uh, an ideal case. And that's what we do as entrepreneurs. Well, uh, David, I mean, you, you have so much great wisdom to share. I'm, I'm just so thankful that, that you've been here with us today. We're starting to run low on time, but I have just two more questions for you. Uh, number one, uh, what's the one question that you wish I asked you, but I didn't? Well, what's what's uh, next for Modern Drummer? There you go. I love talking about what that brand is doing and how we're doing it. You know, we're doing, you know, Amazing awesome. collaborations. You know, we're really excited. We're working with the world's greatest drummers on a daily basis and the world's greatest artists. Um, and it's just such an honor to collaborate with all these incredible artists. And, um, you know, that's just, it's just going to be a great year. And we have, a, you know, there's a lot of great projects in the works. And between the method books that we have and the podcasts and the festival and uh, the Neo Peart Spirit of Drumming Scholarship that's, uh, you know, second annual that we're accepting entries for right now. And all of the great features that we do on a daily basis. Um, you know, it's just a great time to be drumming and a great time to be part of our community. That's amazing. I mean, again, you're talking to a fanboy here. I, I just love Modern Drummer and I'm just so uh, happy to see that you're breathing some some real fresh life uh, in, into it. And, and it sounds like... Uh, there's some real good things to come. Um, and will you be at, uh, will you be at the NAM show? I'm going to try. It's a, it's, you know, that, that show, the last one I was at was January of 2020, like most oh, yeah. of us. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and when everyone got sick there and thought it was just NAM thrax, uh, you know, which traditionally happens when hundreds of thousands of people are shaking hands for three or four days, uh, it turns out it was COVID. Right. So right. Um, here we are now, uh, hopefully this coming NAM show will start to get some of the spirit and energy of the last one. Then stay well, we tuned. Hope you, we hope you will be there. Uh, if you're there, you are more than welcome at the Triple G uh, exhibit at, at Booth. We might be collaborating. I, 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 Triple, G, sounds... the Triple G exhibit might be a, a, a co-brand with Modern Drummer, the way that we're talking. You, you're you hearing this first. I mean, I'm, I got my fingers crossed on this and uh, we'll, we'll be doing some talking. So a little tease for everyone that's that's listening. Thank you for that, David. Pretty awesome. Um, and, and David, here's the last question. Where can listeners find you online? I mean, you got so much more to talk about. How do, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, my socials are at David Frangioni. My website is davidfrangioni.com um, and uh, david at moderndrummer.com. So easy to find me. Pretty awesome. Well, David, thank you once again for being here. Really, really appreciate it. And for anybody that's that's listening, uh, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that social media good stuff. Uh, definitely spread the word. Uh, success at scale with Triple G Ventures and David Frangioni. Uh, pretty awesome. 
modern drummer. I uh, can't wait to follow what you guys are up to and, and everything else you're working on for that matter, David. So thank you again. And until we see you next time, peace.